Contemporary accounts disagreed on who her family were. Some said she was from Wiltshire and her father was a blacksmith. Others claimed that she was the illegitimate daughter of Thomas Howard, 3rd Earl of Berkshire. Wherever she came from, by 1663, she had become the principal performer at the Duke's Theatre in London. Moll was the first commoner that King Charles II openly took as a mistress. Charles had undoubtedly engaged the services of prostitutes or had one-off liaisons with low-born women before, but royal mistresses needed to be of a certain stock, aristocrats moving in the same circle as the king. It was George Villa's first Duke of Buckingham who proposed finding Charles an actress who might take up the role of mistress. He was attempting to oust his cousin, Barbara Palmer, from power, as he didn't think she had been promoting his interests enough with the king. The best course of action, he thought, was to look outside the now thinning crowd of noble women, from which the king had usually selected his playmates, and which was much depleted and into a pool of younger, less demanding and more yielding women. Charles loved the theatre and its women, who were the first ever to be allowed to take jobs as thespians, so indulging himself in the arms of the talented and glamorous actresses was a good fit for the king. Three women were procured for the king. Jane Roberts, who had a very brief but ultimately unsuccessful fling with the king. Nell Gwynne, who initially asked for £500 a year to be kept as the king's mistress, which was deemed far too expensive. And Moll, who was renowned for her beautiful face and figure and her seductive performances on stage. Moll and Charles began seeing each other casually from the summer of 1667. In November, the king attended a play that Moll was starring in and it was suggested that it was her beautiful singing voice of the ballad, My Lodging is on the Cold Ground that roused Charles to pursue her even more aggressively. By now the king was smitten and plans were underway to elevate Moll to the position of a royal mistress and at the end of 1667 Charles made plans to set her up in a beautifully furnished house on Suffolk Street close by to St. James's Park and Whitehall Palace, and Moll agreed to the payment of £200 a year to become his mistress. The promotion of an actress to the position of royal mistress was the talk of the town, and it wasn't long before Moll was boasting about her look in theatre circles. It seemed that her new role quickly went to her head, Samuel Pepys wrote on the 11th of January 1668 that a fellow actress, Mrs. Nepp, told him that Moll is for certain going away from the Duke's house, the King being in love with her, and a house is taken for her, and furnishing, and she hath a ring given to her already, worth £600, which is over a million in today's money. A few days later, Samuel Pepys' wife, Elizabeth, complained that Moll was acting like the most impertinent slut and that this homie Jade was flashing her beautiful new ring to everybody at the theatre. Back at court, Moll was putting just about everyone's noses out of joint 
especially Queen Catherine, who could not believe that Charles would stoop so low as to take her commoner as a mistress. Though she had now left the Duke's theatre, Moll, renowned for her singing, dancing and guitar playing, still starred in occasional court performances. And at the end of May 1668, she put on a performance at a court event that was so provocative that Queen Catherine got up and left halfway through, furious that she was being made to watch her husband's mistress dance in such a suggestive way. Charles, of course, was mesmerised. Anything that Moll lacked in terms of status, intelligence, a conversation she more than made up for with her sexual magnetism, beauty and dancer's body. The king was infatuated by his fun and sexy actress companion, who was a welcome change from the high maintenance and demanding Barbara Palmer. But why stop at one actress when you can have two? Mull was soon to have a rival for the king's attention. Nell Gwynne was back in town. Even with Mull freshly established as the king's newest mistress, Charles's men were pursuing Nell again on behalf of the king. Long before Mull and Nell were rivals for the king's affections, they were counterparts in competing theatre companies. Moll at the Duke's Theatre and Nell at the King's Theatre. Though Nell has been remembered as one of the most famous and most talented comedy actresses of the Restoration, it was Moll's singing and dancing that made her stand out from the rest. Samuel Pepys could not resist comparing the two, writing, her dancing was a similar performance that Nell had recently put on. Nell, not above resorting to foul play, one day when she learned that Moll had an appointment to spend the evening with the king, Nell invited her round for afternoon tea, but the cakes had been baked with a powerful laxative. That evening, while in the king's company, Moll suffered the full force of the spiked sweet treats. After that, Moll and Charles's relationship cooled somewhat. While Moll did remain in the king's favour, their relationship became far more casual. She was also starring in performances and plays at court securing herself as one of the top actresses in England, as well as retaining her house and pension from the king and even an occasional place in his bed. On the 16th of October, 1673, Moll gave birth to their first and Charles's final child, a daughter named Mary. In December 1680, their daughter was granted the title of Lady Mary Tudor in recognition of her royal connection and his fondness for her mother. In 1686, almost two years after Charles's death, Moll married James Pisable, a musician and composer. After James II was unseated as king, they spent time at the court in exile in Saint-Germain-en-Laye in France. They began a chancery suit over in England to retrieve some of the money that Moll was owed from her pension allocated by Charles II. After a few years abroad, they were successful in their case and managed to get passports back to England in 1693. Moll lived, as far as we know, a fairly quiet life, far from the hustle and bustle of court, whose days were far behind her. After that, the record of Moll goes quiet, but we could assume that she enjoyed an artsy, decadent, fun life, as she had always wanted. 
she died in 1708. Although Mull may be one of the lesser-known mistresses, she is never considered one of Charles II's favourite mistresses, but she certainly caused a stir when she first became the king's concubine and appeared to have remained a friend to Charles until his death. Their daughter went on to become a famous actress too, following in the footsteps of her mother and her bohemian at heart father. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future videos. Thank you.